I have such a rich, full life, and I get all my wishes. Meet the remarkable June Lockhart, an admired American actress who continues to delight TV fans at the age of 98. Born in 1925, she shines an ageless glow, consistently lively, grateful, and refined, gracefully challenging the passage of time. We'll look at her career, three foods she has daily, her single-ingredient food diet, passions, exercise, beauty, ritual, stress management, longevity traits, sleep. Also, we will look at the evidence-based science to better understand why June has a long, active life. Born to renowned actors Jean and Kathleen Lockhart, June made her stage debut at the young age of eight. By 12, she entered the world of films, appearing in the 1938 version of A Christmas Carol alongside her parents. June shared with her friends a very sweet letter that her father wrote to her before she appeared in her first film. It was filled with loving advice and wisdom. The letter was a very special gift that she always cherished. Both my parents were uh, very successful actors in the business, Kathleen and Jean Lockhart, and so uh, I had a, a, a lovely home life. June's Hollywood journey gained momentum, notably her performance in Meet Me in St. Louis, which showcased her charm making a lasting impression. In 1958, June Lockhart's television career soared to new heights when she joined the long-running children's classic TV show, Lassie. I'm June Lockhart, and for over six years, I played the role of Ruth Martin on television's Lassie show. She became America's first mom as Ruth Martin, the patient and understanding mother in the adventures of Timmy and the courageous Collie Lassie. The show garnered her an Emmy nomination in 1958, Best Actress in a Continuing Performance in a Dramatic Series. The show ran for six years and continues today to be watched by viewers all over the world. Her maternal roles continue to resonate with audiences in the sci-fi classic TV series, Lost in Space, where she played Maureen Robinson. Punch is ready. I'll get the coffee. Little mechanical man. Now you're part of this family, and what happens to you happens to all of us. My computers are deeply moved by your loyalty. Lockhart's ability to convey warmth, humor, and resilience endeared her to viewers. She continued her career through the 70s, 80s, and 90s participating in TV movies, miniseries, and stage productions, June said in an interview. I've always been most discriminating about what I do. I'm exceedingly independent, so there's no need to feel pressure to work. If something appropriate comes along, I'll do it. June's influence extends far beyond the screen encompassing a life of diverse experiences, advocacy, and a positive outlook that defies age. Through her tireless volunteer work, her passion for animals led her to actively participate in International Herring Dog, Inc., a program rescuing dogs from shelters to assist the hearing impaired. And June's commitment to animals also included vital contributions to sustaining the Santa Monica, California Police Horse Mounted Unit. Facing budget cuts, she proposed alternatives, launched a fundraising campaign, and engaged the community to rescue the unit. Her commitment to various causes, corporate spokesperson roles, and service on committees and boards showcase her enduring dedication. In her own words, June expressed gratitude for the opportunities that came her way. She told the Burlington County Times, I've had many opportunities that just dropped into my lap. Glad I was equal to them, she says. I used to think 90, gosh, that's old. But I feel 55. I'm very fortunate to still be active and working. June Lockhart's positive attitude toward life and aging is truly inspiring. Her resilience, positive mindset, and zest for life make June Lockhart, not just a Hollywood legend, but a source of inspiration for generations to come. June embraced an active lifestyle that contributed to her vitality. She told the Los Angeles Daily News, I've been working out twice a week for years and years and years. I've always been athletic. She told the Burlington County Times I was a ballet student at the Met and also danced in several operas with the Corp de Ballet. Growing up, she would water ski in Lake Arrowhead. 
She told the Quad City Times, Anytime I was working, all I wanted to do was finish the show so I could go to Lake Arrowhead. My family had a house up there from 1939 till 1965. Whenever Daddy wasn't working and whenever I wasn't working, we spent all our time up there. We went up there every weekend. We went up every holiday. We were involved in the community. It was very, very important to us. June also said, at the time, my whole concentration was sports. Being up at Lake Arrowhead in my speedboat and water skiing, swimming, tennis, and all that was going on at that time. June's friend, Lydia Lane, asked her, what beauty ritual do you value most? June said quickly, relaxing. She went on to say, I think tensions do more to tear us down physically and mentally than anything else. When I'm under pressure or when there is friction, all around me, I try not to get emotionally involved. I try to look at the situation of detachment and find a great difference in pulling away. When someone is high strung and his voice is rising with anger, I don't pick up his mood, but I force myself to speak soft and low. The mind plays a large part in this relaxing game. June's beauty ritual emphasized relaxation, recognizing the impact of tension on physical and mental well-being. Her approach to challenging situations involve detachment and finding a peaceful retreat. In a National Institute for Health article called Positive Attitude Towards Life and Emotional Expression as Personality Phenotypes for Centenarians, the results generated two personality characteristics, domains, positive attitude towards life such as optimism, easygoing laughter, and introversion outgoing and the second trait, emotional expression, such as expressing emotions openly and not bottling up emotions. June is always upbeat. Now, this episode was just preposterous. Laughing with a positive outlook on life. These are common traits of longevity. Positive attitude towards life and emotional expression as personality phenotypes for centenarians, June Lockhart maintains a consistently positive attitude, approaching a heightened level of emotional awareness, allowing her to navigate life's challenges with a deep understanding of her own and others' emotions. This awareness contributes to her overall well-being and resilience. June tells the story of a friend. She says, I had a friend who had a great problem with insomnia. She didn't want to become a sleeping pill addict. So someone suggested she look into sleep hypnosis. June next said about her friend, she had great success with the power of suggestion, so I tried it and found it works, even on the set. June explained, first you take a deep breath and yawn to help release the tension. The point is to associate drowsiness and falling asleep with some image. It takes time to cement this association, but it's worth working for. The one image I chose was a blue rose. Now when I get myself stretched out, I try to wipe out all scattered thoughts from my mind and visualize a blue rose. I'm soon asleep. The National Institute for Health Studies show napping may reduce a person's risk of death from heart disease, possibly by lowering stress levels. People who nap regularly have a 35 less chance of dying from heart disease and a lower rate of depression. While having lunch with Lydia, June tells her friend regarding food and health, I don't eat any kind of mystery food, just a nice, plain, nourishing diet, and I've never smoked. I think that makes a difference. And she's right. Studies show eating ultra-processed foods, which might be what June is referring to. When she says the mystery food, the ultra-processed foods have been proven to contribute towards many cancers such as colorectal breast, ovarian, and pancreatic cancers. Plus, ultra-processed foods also contribute to heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. There are many National Institute for Health articles on this. Here is just one of several association between ultra-processed foods and risk of cancer, a systematic review, and meta-analysis. The conclusion. The present meta-analysis suggests that high ultra-processed foods consumption is associated with a significantly increased risk of certain cancers, 
especially the digestive tract and some hormone-related cancers. By the way, read the food ingredient labels. You're not wearing your necessary prescription eyeglasses. There are many cancer-causing additives that are allowed in our foods in small amounts. Over time, the small amounts in your bodies can pile up causing cancer and other diseases. June's diet of non-mystery foods, also known as single-ingredient foods, help to avoid this issue. Regarding vitamins, June told her friend Lydia, my doctor has prescribed a vitamin supplement to fortify my diet. June's stabilized weight allowed her to enjoy life without the constant worry about every mouthful. Her daily routine included a breakfast of three foods that have been proven to prevent disease increasing longevity. First, for a breakfast, June has a half grapefruit each day. A National Institute for Health Narrative Review of the Effects of Citrus Peels and Extracts on Human Brain Health and Metabolism stated that many flavonoid-rich foods, such as grapefruits, were clearly correlated with lower odds of cognitive decline. Second, she has black coffee light to moderate coffee consumption is associated with lower risk of death. A UK biobank study, the study's conclusion showed coffee consumption of up to three cups per day was associated with favorable cardiovascular outcomes. Regular coffee consumption was also associated with a likely healthy pattern of cardiovascular magnetic resonance metrics in keeping with the reverse of age-related cardiac alterations. In a National Institute for Health coffee study, relative to men and women who did not drink coffee. Those who consumed three or more cups of coffee per day had approximately a 10% lower risk of death. And third for breakfast, June drinks a pint of skim milk. June says, between breakfast and dinner, I drink two quarts of skim milk. I have a glass whenever I'm hungry and it satisfies me. In a National Institute for Health study, decreased risk of all cause and a heart-specific mortality is associated with low fat or skim milk consumption compared with whole milk intake. A cohort study conclusion compared with whole milk, low fat or skim milk intake was associated with reduced total and heart-related mortality. Other studies suggest that the higher level of protein in skimmed milk helps to build muscles much faster than the whole milk version. Skimmed milk has a host of associated health benefits as well, such as controlled blood sugar levels, weight loss and management, improved muscle function, good bone mineral density, and regulated blood pressure and cholesterol levels. One of the benefits of skim milk is the high amount of protein, calcium, phosphorus, and potassium with its low amount of calories. Studies indicate that drinking organic skim milk is ideal because it is sourced from cows that are given organic feed. Thus, their milk is more nutrient-rich and contains more omega-3 fatty acids, which are an energy source, and ensure that your heart, lungs, blood vessels, and immune system are all functioning properly. Sometimes for lunch, June will have scrambled eggs. She varies this. For dinner, she'll have a balanced diet made up of a salad, lean meat, chicken or fish, a baked potato, and a homemade dessert when dining at Clifton's Cafeteria. Please share with our community and comment on your current step towards longevity. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.